it asked a lot, and mostly by those that follow the Christian religion, why did I choose to dive into Islam or the, Mus the Muslim way of life? Because as a child, um, I wasn't exactly given a choice about um, which way to go or how to connect with the Most High. Because when you're a child, you usually follow your parents' beliefs or religions. Now, my grandmother was a Southern Baptist, so I was first in their household. And my granddad did not go to church with her. I would stay home with him and we would watch Farrakhan on the TV um, every Sunday. So my grandfather was somewhat living that way of life. And um, one day um, after I'd grown up, then I moved into the house with my parents. My mother had been Baptist. My father was Methodist. So my mother followed him in his religion. And we being kids, my brother and I had to follow what my father was doing. We didn't have a toys. So one day um, when I did become an adult and I transferred here to Macon, I think I was maybe 22 when I first came to Macon. Then I returned back and then I came back again. But the first time I walked into a store over on Napier, and there was this music playing. And it was like, it felt like home to me. And it was calling me. And I, I, honest to goodness, I think in my past life, I was Muslim. And I also believe that I was in Ethiopia. That's where I lived. But when I went, it was just something that went off like this memory, this knowing, this, um, I felt like home. And it was actually a store owned by a Muslim family um, who lived the Muslim way of life. They were from Morocco. And when I walked in, I said, what is this? It, it sounds so familiar. And he told me it was the Surah. I say, I, it seems as though I know it. And the craziest thing I understood when they spoke in Arabic, I understood it. And I was like, how do I know what they're saying? How do I understand it? And the only explanation I could get is that maybe I understood it because maybe I spoke it in a past life, but still I felt as though I was in the Ethiopian era or area in my past life. And um, so I was curious and I started to talk with a man that was there that lived that way of life. And eventually um, he and um, another person introduced me and I went through this thing, what they call, where I 
made the player the Shahada. We did Uru. I learned how to pray five times a day. Um, that women are to be very modest and cover from head to toe. Um, there were many, many things in that way of life that I loved because I always had an issue with the way I saw the Christian, so-called Christian women living in the way they dressed, showing a lot of skin. Um, and the people that I saw, it was just very contradictory as to their religion would teach certain things. But the people that I saw in that religion or met in that religion was anything but what was being taught. It was just ironic. And my first experience of that was um, when I was a little girl, maybe a teenager, we had like this church convention and we went to Jacksonville and there was this lady, I absolutely admire her. I thought she was the epitome of what a God type woman should be until I saw what I saw on that church convention. Um, all the teenagers were left in the room and we were wondering where had the adults disappeared to? Well, we got wind that they were over at another hotel that was just walking distance over a bridge. So a couple of the teenagers and I, we went across the bridge to the hotel because we really wanted to see what they were doing. You know, we thought they were doing something godly, <laughs> you know. But um, when we entered into the hotel, the person at the front said, well, um, we just had a group of adults come in and go into the lounge. I say the lounge. She said, yeah, it's kind of like a bar or something. So we went, <laughs> the group of us, he didn't stop us. And we peeped into the bar. And lo and behold, that godly woman I thought was godly. She was dressed with this mini, with this low cut thing. I could not believe, I mean, that picture illusion of her that I had in my head was just broken. And she was like dancing and gyrating on this man and I could not understand. I mean, my whole view of her just, it just went out the window. So I told myself that when I became an adult, I would explore, so I explored different types of religion um, or um, Baptist, Methodist, um, Orthodox, Sanctified. I used to go to Sanctified and, I, and people would jump around and holler and fall on the floor. And I remember a pastor trying to make me fall. I guess he was trying to heal or whatever. He kept hitting me in my head and kept hitting me in my head. And I saw that when he hit other people, they would fall to the ground. But I say, well, am I supposed to feel something? And so when he hit me, I didn't fall. And he hit me again. And I wouldn't fall. And he looked at me rather weirdly. And I said, I guess I'm supposed to fall. So I fell on the floor. And then, only then, did he go to the next person to hit them. And I say, this is just a bunch of hogwash and fakeness and illusion. So I'm telling you, when I walked in to that store and I heard the Sora plan, it just felt like home. And now... um, 
I am ordained, but I tell everybody that I'm not your traditional pastor or preacher. I'm spiritual. I do not follow religion because I believe that we have a direct connection with the Most High. And yes, I've had influences, but when spirituality takes over and you become one with the Most High, those barriers are released. Those beliefs that you had before melt away. And you have a pure connection with the Most High. Because now you see that you are now one with the Most High. Mm -hmm. And lives in you. And I even remember there's a lot of misinterpretation of the holy books. There's the Torah, the Quran, the um, Bible, Holy Bible. And I've read all three. And in the Holy Bible, in Psalms, it says, ye are gods. But that's very seldomly taught in the Christian church. And it's right there in Psalms. It says, ye are gods. And if we are gods, what does that mean? That we have the abilities and the same abilities as the Most High God. And a lot of that is skipped. So I guess the question was, why did I dive into Islam? And I've answered that question. And um, I just, I don't think that I think that religion separates people instead of bringing them together. I've seen people fight because they were different religions, but people don't understand that Islam is a peaceful way of life. It's not a religion. It's a way of life. It teaches you to balance money. It teaches how you should go about in relationships and it teaches you um like for instance with the makeup um thing if a man marries you in the islam faith and then one morning he wakes up and he discovers that you have worn makeup because you don't look like you looked when he met you. It's kind of like he may feel that you deceived him or you were deceptive. So a lot of Muslims um, during, during the time, there's always somebody there when you're like, I guess you call it courtship or dating. There's always like someone there to prevent temptation of you um, going over the line prior to marriage. But once you are claimed by one of the Muslim men, the other men will respect that and stay away from that Muslim. Unlike the Christian religion or just on general, some men around here don't care whether a man has claimed you or not. They still go try to get in there, but not with um, Islam. If the woman accepts that this man has claimed her as his Muslim and he's planning on marrying her, the other men respect each other and they will not... Um, come towards that Muslina or, you know, make a move on her, as she would say. But, um, yeah, it's a way of life. And that's how I can answer that question for you. How did I become involved? It's a, my, from my grandfather 
That was my first experience. And my grandfather was a very calm man. On the other hand, my grandmother was a fireball. She was always screaming, yelling, the light. She had a mean streak in her. But I never saw that in my grandfather. It was always peaceful. He was always in nature. And I would go with him. We were out by the ocean. We would fish. We would do quiet things. And he was living, uh, I guess, the Islam or the Muslim way of life. He was just really peaceful. And when I heard that music years later, it brought a calm over me that I had not known in years. But I guess I answered the question for some. You guys have a good day. <laughs>